Hi, I'm glad you could join me. I'm in the Old Testament book of 2 Chronicles. There is a, a king during that time, a few generations after King David, who was named Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat was uh, overall a very good king, but he was allied by marriage to the, to the king of, of Israel, to a man by the name of Ahab, who was a very idolatrous king. And so we find in the scripture times when this idolatrous king Ahab and this righteous king Jehoshaphat are working together. And sometimes it's almost like there are strange bedfellows, to use uh, our, wor our words and our world's ideas. Now in the, in the 19th chapter, excuse me, in the 19th chapter of Second Chronicles, one of the uh, successors to Ahab, uh, a man by the name of Jehu, comes to Jehoshaphat and he, 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 he stands him down and he casts him down and he, he levels him with his words by saying, you know, you've allied yourself with the king of, of Samaria, that wicked king, and yet there are still some good things in you. Well, I want us to understand that there are times in leadership when we have to make uh, tough decisions. And it's a, uh, a situation where if we do it one way, we get criticized and we, we see the failings that way. If we do it the other way, we get criticized and we see the failings that way. Jehoshaphat was in that kind of a predicament. Between a rock and a hard place, you might say. I would say also it's life is messy and we have to deal with the messiness of life. Now that's what Jehoshaphat was dealing with. And yet in the midst of that, he instituted reforms on, uh, for Judah that, was, that were very, very good. He set up judges and he gave them instruction and he led a righteous reform of that nation that led to revival. And about that time, and now we're getting into the next chapter, in chapter 20 of uh, first Chron or Second Chronicles, in that next chapter, there is all of a sudden a test of, Je of Jehoshaphat. An army comes against him that is, is, is mighty. Uh, it is, I, I, I always seem to recall that it's a million-man army, but I don't know if that's exactly right. It's, it's a large and threatening force that is coming against Josh, Jehoshaphat at that particular time. And while he's dealing with all of that, one of his prophets says, Jehoshaphat, you don't need to do anything. This is the Lord's fight. And so in the midst of all of that, this is the passage where Jehoshaphat puts singers at the front of his army, and they go out against this army. This is one, one time when I would not want to be in the choir. But he goes out against this army, and, and God brings them into confusion, and they kill each other, and they, then Jehoshaphat's army never has to uh, fire a bullet, so to speak, shoot an arrow, throw a spear. Jehoshaphat is victorious, and the people take the spoils for three days after that. Now, the reason I bring that up is that it's very interesting that despite the fact that Jehoshaphat goes through this time where life has been messy for him, where he's had to make decisions and make uh, have connections with unrighteous people, and he can't live perfectly righteous a perfectly righteous life. Yet, God delivers him. Yet, he trusts in the Lord, and the Lord delivers him. Now, for you and me, life gets messy. For you and me, we have to make decisions that are difficult for us to grasp, difficult for us to understand. We have to make decisions sometimes that put us in, in a strange bed with people that we don't agree with. And yet, 
that doesn't mean that God has forsaken us. It doesn't mean that we have to live perfect lives otherwise in order to have God's blessing. He understands that life is messy. And so the, the bottom line is that we need to recognize that sometimes we are put in those difficult situations. We may not know what to do. We may not know how to handle it. It may be, like in Jehoshaphat's case, that family is involved. And we have to do things that uh, the family is not always fully on board with Christ. But yet, we have to go along with that because we want to keep peace and we want our witness to continue before them. And so life gets messy, but yet God is faithful to work with us and he will deliver us if we will put our trust in him. Father, we thank you for this example and we thank you that in the midst of it all, this is not an excuse for uh, unrighteousness. It's not an excuse for failing to stand up to uh, people when they're doing things that are, uh, that are wrong and against your word. But yet, we still find ourselves at times in a place of messiness. And so grant to us the grace that we need in order to follow you and trust you, just as Jehoshaphat did. And deliver us as clearly as and as forcefully, so that the world might see that you are God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day now.